Hey, David T.S. Wood here and welcome to My Extra Mile. Today's show is with two extraordinary multi-millionaires who are gonna share their number one investment tip. Don't miss it. I've taught this for years. Someone once asked me, they said, if there's something you don't have, there's something you don't know. So if you don't have wealth in your life right now, listen to the show and share it. Get involved with the conversation. Leave a comment and please subscribe. Enjoy and we'll see you on the other side. Hey, Jan. Hey, Jono. Welcome back. Here we go again. Oh, my gosh. We could talk for days, I know. You know? But, you know, we talked about money. Uh, we talked about work and how people have this kind of strange, uh, sometimes strange energy towards those two things, work and money. Uh, by the way, if you haven't heard these, uh, they're very short shows. They're powerful. Just click. Go find them. Listen to them. Um, and, and Jan and John, let's talk about this. You know, we talk about investment, investing. And a lot of people, when they hear the word investing, they think about real estate. They think about stock markets. They think about those kinds of things. But what all three of us have learned is our greatest investment that we can make is actually in ourselves. So why don't you share a little bit about how you've been able to use the, or the, the, the deeper understanding about how you invest in yourself to be able to create the life that you have. And just to give everyone context, you've been able to create a life of absolute freedom and choice where you have abundance. You've been able to, be able to realize you, the dreams that you had as a little girl, you are now living at such a young age. So with that being said, let's talk about investing. What's the primary place we can invest? Well, I think the concept of investing is so it's such a, a potent concept. And if we understand it, we just start to think differently. And, and really, what can we invest to start with? So really, I can only think of three things that we can invest. We can invest our time, we can invest our money, and we can invest our energy. And um, if our energy doesn't, if, we, if we're investing our time, but not our energy, people sometimes say to me, what do you mean by that? Well, if we're investing our time, but um, let's say in, I'm just trying to think of an example. Well, even in, in show, even in going to university, right? Let's say I decide I'm going to be a physiotherapist and commuting to four years at university. And I just, I show up, I show up at the lectures, but I just don't want to be there. And I'm just, I'm not engaged. I'm not into the process. I'm not throwing, you know, my, I'm not putting my energy. I'm not interacting the results going to be very different at the end of four years. Yeah. So, so, so then once we understand this concept of investing and return on investment, we can ask ourselves, is this a worthy investment of my time, of my energy and of my money? And it's, it's, it's just, it's clear. And it doesn't mean that we're always looking for a return, but we can invest um, I might invest my energy into having a nice hot soaking bath and that might be something that I need right now at the moment to make me a better version of me. But I think sometimes people, we're, we're just wandering around unconsciously and we're spending our time and our money and our energy and it, it's, there's no return. It's never coming back. It's just gone. It's spent. And once it's gone and it's spent, that's a little bit sad. But what if we can use it in a way that, brings more to us mm. and to others and to the world and to the planet. Yeah. So I think that's really the concept and it. it's, I've just found it to be so powerful because it really helps me decide what to do with those three things. Mm. Well, and if we look at the, the flip side, and I know John, you like to play that sort of flip side role, right? Is mm. that how often we get caught up investing our time, money and energy into things that like, like Jen just talked about, where there's no ROI, return on investment. But in fact, it's even worse than that. It's not no return. It actually sort of drags us into often lives that feel unfulfilled or empty or we feel lost or stuck or all of those sort of negative words. John, what's, what's your sort of, you know, the, the, the path that you both have taken has involved a lot of investing in each other, investing in your family, investing in, in learning and investing in growing. Talk to us about your path. 
Um, well, yeah, originally my path was, it was funny because it, as I said, the learnings that came from it were incredible, but at the time it was that reality day of exactly what Jen just spoke into then of going to a job, a job basically that was, it really wasn't really rewarding me at the, at the back end with anything as far as I wasn't being satisfied by it. I was stressed by it. I, there was a whole heap of stuff, you know, coming from that. And it wasn't a good use of my time because there was no, I couldn't see it. I couldn't see an end. I couldn't, not, I couldn't see there was, there was no direction anymore. Um, and then, and then that was that question again, it was like, well, well, well what, there's gotta be something better. There's gotta be something better. Um, luckily I found this incredible lady, uh, you know, and, and, and the passion that she showed, but even in that time, time it was in a, in a different profession as well. But, um, but then the question started between the two of us, well, there must be, there must be more because the environment we were in as a whole still brought up so many questions and the people that we were surrounded by showed us that every day that, you know, they were, they were tired, they were unhappy, they were disgruntled, they were toxic um, and stuck. stuck. And it was like, well, we need to change this environment. We have to, and that's when we took the big step to move out of that environment and we gave away two incredibly well-earning jobs. I mean, for the, at the time of where we were at, I mean, we we're only both quite young. Um, we were earning great money, but there was, there just didn't feel like there was, there was any more, we couldn't go anywhere with that. It was a dead, it was a dead end. We'd capped out, we'd capped our income potential of what we were doing. We'd capped our lifestyle in that respect as well. We'd, and we didn't want to be in that environment in, anymore. So we, we took a step, to do something completely different and we jumped and we went to the other side of the world. We made sure that we, this is a bit of, it's a bit of a story, but I suppose it's an example of, we just made a, made a commitment that we would do something completely different and not even allow ourselves to go back to that environment. And we stepped, we just stepped off the cliff, Dave, and we had no idea, but we knew at the time too, where we were like, okay, so now we've stepped. What now? And, that's when we really started to look then for, well, what's next? What, 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 how do we, because what we wanted to do straight away was we wanted to replace that income. We both sat down and we actually said, well, our goal is in the next five years, we want to, re we want to replace the incomes that we had, but in a different environment, in an environment that was going to serve us a lot better, an environment that was going to make us happier. So all these questions started, these constant questions, well, how, 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 how? And that's when the journey, the journey mm. really started for us. And, and figuring out what we didn't know, because obviously there's stuff we didn't know. I mean, even right now still, right? There's so, the more you learn, the more you realize. Oh yeah, my God, yeah. The more you don't know. So much they don't know. Yeah. But I remember we paid. Right. Um, so our, so the first, first idea was, right, shares and property. They're the two ways to make money. How to go at business. Business is great. Can do that. But holy cow, it's like 14 hours a day, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know, when you're in a business or a job and Sunday afternoon comes around and you get, I call it Sunday gut. Yeah. And you get that deep Not feeling of dread. Yeah. yeah. Just it's starting and it starts about lunchtime mm. and just get, it just builds as you get closer because you know Monday morning's coming and you just you can't even find joy in Sunday afternoon. You know that's a sign you need to make a move. Mm -hmm. You need something needs to change. You can't live every Sunday like that. That's that's not life's too short for that, right? That's a great and point so, though. That's a great point. Anyone listening, if you have that feeling of dread on a Sunday, you know it's time to make a shift. Right? It's a flag. It's a real flag is to sort of notice that feeling in your gut. Carry on. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we decided we had to, had to go at shares trading, but I, I couldn't find myself the, any joy in it. So, mm. um, property though, I could get excited about property. And so, so, but it was hard to find someone to teach us what we didn't know in, and in that, at that time, there just wasn't people teaching, but we found this guy to teach us and we paid him $26,000 for 12 hours of his time, one hour a month. We drove four and a half hours to sit with him for one hour and then drove four and a half hours home. And he told us what to do. And then, and that's what we paid him. And, you know, it, people go, what? why would you do that? That's ridiculous. But he taught 
he taught, I still remember th clearly the three things that he taught me that have been so impactful and, and so pivotal in us. He, he taught us so much, but what, one of the things was everything starts as an idea. And I remember him sitting there, we were in the Stanford Hotel in Brisbane, and he said, this hotel, it just starts, someone had an idea. Mm. How incredible mm. is that concept? It, it was an idea and now here it is in all its glory in physical form. Mm. And can you imagine all the steps that had to happen to get it to be the, the completed project? Which is just like, it's, quite, it's really quite mind blowing, right? But it's just, if, it did, if the idea wasn't there, the hotel wouldn't be here now. The other thing he taught us was the concept of cold calling, just having the courage, having the guts to jump on the phone and talk to someone you don't know about a subject you don't know very much about. <laughs> um, such, such a huge learning curve, but that really carried forward into our, into our next business, you know, into the, into the business that we're in now, just being able to have those conversations. And, and Dave, you've taught us so much about, you know, about that and, and, just connecting with humans at that level, even when you don't know them. And, um, and the other thing he taught, taught me was about filling the funnel. So imagine that no matter what business we're in, we have to have people, people only buy or sell. In this case, we were looking for people to sell property when they're ready, when the time is right for them. But if you don't have anyone in the funnel, how are they ever going to fall through when the time is right for them? And so that they're just big kind of principles, but they they play across every area. So understanding those principles was absolutely worth twenty six grand. And that, well, I think, there, and there was one other thing. He taught us a lot of things. There's one other really important thing that he he, he taught us, Dave, as well. And um, it's one thing that you're incredibly good at too. Is that I mean, um, he, he he taught us about learning, you know, to understand people's needs, mm. like um, you. I've often, you know, said in regards when you stand on stage, you don't stand on stage and want to talk to people. You off, you think, well, what do what do the audience need? You you your actual, you envision yourself in the audience, looking up on stage, and thinking, well, if the person on stage, what is the person on stage delivering? What what can I get from that person? And that was the biggest. He had a number plate on his car, on his Porsche, and it had needs. That's what he had written. My first interpretation, funny thing. My first interpretation was I thought he needed a Porsche. Oh. <laughs> right. But when I actually questioned him about it, he, we obviously, as we went through the process, he actually was a master at addressing people's needs. And he taught us one of the biggest things in property was also it's not about the money. So often it's not about the money. It's how can you help these people? What are their needs? Yeah. Yeah. What are their emotional drivers? What do they need? What do they need to make that next step? So that was, so, that was huge as well. Yeah. So talk, talking about return on investment. So the return on that 26 grand has probably been about 5 million. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and you just go, wow. And so if you, if, if people, if you, we could say to any human, right, you find 26 grand and we'll give you back 5 million in five years time. Everyone would say yes to that. Right everyone but no one will say yes to spending the 26 grand unless it's guaranteed mm -hmm. sure it be. But, but we can say the twenty six thousand because I, I can just hear the minds of a lot of people who are in the lower income bracket who's listening to us thinking you know that's five years savings for me but we could say twenty six hundred dollars or we could say two hundred and sixty dollars people have the same mindset the same concept if we take away some of the zeros sure. for some people if, if they don't have a lot of money and we say, look, it's $260 to come to a two and a half day program, you know, and that program, you're going to learn something that could accelerate your life. I think it's the same thing, uh, Jen, where, you know, people are unwilling. We're talking about investing in self. I would say the greatest investment I've ever made is in my understanding, my learning, my, these, the, 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 the programs, the, the flights, the hotels where I've gone. And sometimes it's one concept. And sometimes it's the compounding concept. But what I love is when I go to places to learn, I often surround myself with people who are there to learn. And I end up learning as much from the people I'm surrounded by as I do from the guy or the girl who's talking in front of a room. And so, yeah, so, so as, as we sort of tie this in a bow, 
what's advice? What advice would you give someone who's, who's maybe stuck right now or they, they don't have the things they want when we come back to the idea about making the right investment, but also choosing to put ourselves into situations where our environment is always an investment around people that really sort of, they, they, they rise us up or they, they, they challenge us. They challenge the way we think, the way we behave, they challenge, and they're, they're truthful to us. So talk about that, you know, some of the, the, the idea that, you know, when we're investing in ourselves and we're putting ourselves into the, these environments where people want to grow, there's a lot of ancillary learning. There's a lot of things that we pick up along the way, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it, it's that we're either investing or spending. Yeah. So which do you want it to be? And you're either investing or spending your time. You're either investing or spending your money or you're either investing or spending your energy. Yeah. So just, just being able to, uh, in every moment, make a more conscious choice mm -hmm. because once it's gone, it's gone. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but then, yeah, absolutely. Like if, as you talk about Dave, if it's not feeling challenging, then it can't create growth. It's like when you go to the gym, it has to hurt, right? We know that. It has to hurt. It has to be uncomfortable. Right. And that doesn't mean we need to step out of our value zone and do things that are completely outside of who we are and our standards and all of that. But, but we do need to stretch and get, get uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And if we're not throwing ourselves and spending our time and money and energy and giving it into those spaces, then we can't grow. And, you know, Jim Quick, he, I don't know, do you know who Jim yeah, Quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Jim well. Awesome. Yeah. So, you know, he, he talks about to, to learn. Well, actually, just to give people context, Jim Quick is the, he, he teaches on the brain, on learning, accelerated learning. Um, you know, he, he's just brilliant. He's, he's renowned now in the world. And I remember when he first started out, because we belong to the same group, um, you know, and I mean, he's just an unbelievably brilliant mind, right? Yeah. And, he, and his story is phenomenal too. It's, it's, a, it's a good story to actually look at. Yeah. So, so to, to learn we actually have to engage in the process. Like, so I, I go to these events where people are there to learn and I watch and I'm sitting there, right, with my notebook in pen and I'm just taking down notes because I know there's no way I'm going to remember all this like in two days time. But people are just sitting there like this, some, some are dozing off, falling asleep. And, and, and I'm just like, why are you even here? Like, that's not a good investment of your time if you're not going to use your energy to engage in the process. And you see people in, in groups online and they never comment, they're never asking questions, they're not showing up. They get in on a Zoom call like this and they're, they're actually in their bed, <laughs> laying on their pillow, like, or they can't, they don't turn their camera on. The and then, you know, and, and Jim, taught, Jim, t Jim t talks about it. Like if we want to integrate our learning and we have that new knowledge in ourselves, we actually have to engage physically in that process. And that means taking notes and repeating the message and teaching it and, and being here and using colors and using movement and all of that sort of stuff. And so, so that, that, that whole concept is just like, let's get as much learning and growth done as we can, because then we can have more impact. And when we, when we have more impact, then we can, it, it just, it starts to spiral upwards, right? Because then when we spend an hour or when we invest an hour, that has a bigger ripple effect than if we're just hanging out drinking beer and throwing a few sausages on the barbie and, and bitching about, you know, the guy across the fence. We can spend an hour doing that or we can spend an hour, you know, talking and, and, learning and then maybe helping people to make different decisions so that then they can have more impact and we have this this big beautiful ripple effect yeah so our, 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 i just i look at it and i think most people the only actual the only income producing asset they actually have is here right some some people also have a business which is an income producing asset but it's fascinating to me that they'll invest their time the money and the energy and everything else first and they give the leftovers to their brain and to their business 
And that, that makes no, there's no logical sense in that. That our, the, the thing that can give us a return on investment because they're our only income producing assets are our brain and our business. So we should be investing in those first and giving the leftovers just then, then we have what's left over afterwards. Well, and typically because people are in the spending mode, right? Versus investing. They're so exhausted by the time it comes to giving to themselves. That's why, you know, they're for you Americans listening, <laughs> Throwing a sausage on a Barbie, they're, they're, they're eating food. <laughs> it's like a wiener, a wiener on a barbecue. Um, so just as we sort of wrap up on this, Jono, you want to add anything to this last piece? Or no, oh, look, I mean, I will I'll bravely say probably no. I mean, it's funny, but it's easy to spend, but it's not as easy to invest. There's no doubt yeah. about that. And it's really. such a beautiful concept. You know, either spending or investing on your time, money, and energy. Simple concept powerful to change that to start thinking about that one concept how do i invest more time on my you know how do i invest in these three key areas with that being said remember this show is all about those little incremental learnings that one little concept you can take one one percent if you could just improve by one percent how it can radically change your life Jenna, Jonna, thank you so much. And again, if you're loving what you're hearing, there's more shows from these two, more conversations, really targeted conversations. So click on them, enjoy them, and we'll see you on the other side.